Okay, uh, thank you so much. I, I cannot uh, thank the organizers because I'm <laughs> being part of the organizers. But uh, actually, <laughs> this exactly. <laughs> actually, this uh, supposed to be the the slot of uh, Jose Jose Luis, but uh, as uh, as you might uh, notice, so he's not here because of some personal issues. And actually, uh, well, uh, this is a series of works between. Art, uh, Arturo Jaramillo, Victor Perez Abreu, and Jose Luis Perez. So, and I was involved in both, so it was quite uh, uh, straightforward to say yes uh, to take his, uh, his uh, slides and speak about the same, the same, uh, the same topic, right? So, uh, this, will, uh, this talk will intercept a lot with the talk of uh, Jacek. But, uh, but they're, they're completely different, so we don't have to worry about it. But I mean, I, I was surprised that they, they look very much, uh, so you will see at the end, right? And this is an ongoing project, so I hope that next week will appear on the archive. I always say it's uh, the same, and <laughs> I never reach to, to send it, right? So, and uh, uh, I will first speak about uh, the first result, which is a joint work with uh, Jose Luis Perez and Victor Perez Abreu. And, uh, and, and this was a, a, a very nice uh, uh, way of collaborating because actually we, we used to have a, a meeting between Mexico and Guanajuato about affine processes and then Victor Perez Abreu asked his question and then we start to work on this. And uh, so we consider uh, n times n symmetric metrics ground in motion, right? And uh, so in other words, uh, we take uh, the, the diagonal to be rounded motions, and then the, below the diagonal is just uh, uh, this one, and then we replicate, right? So this is a set of n, n plus one over two independent one dimensional rounded motions with these parameters. And then you consider uh, the n dimensional stochastic process of its eigenvalues, and as we, uh, as we saw uh, this, uh, uh, this late morning, so uh, Dyson show that the eigenvalues satisfy the following SE, right? So I will not really uh, spend much time on this. Uh, we already saw this, right? So, <clears throat> so uh, then uh, for n bigger than one, we can consider the following rescale sequence, right? So we rescale in an appropriate way, as we saw this uh, morning. So it has one over one over n. And, uh, and then we, we observe that the associated eigenvalue satisfies the following rescale version, right, of the previous. And uh, if we consider the empirical measures, as uh, Jacek uh, defined it, so the celebrate uh, Wigner theorem implies that for each fixed t, n t must converge to the Wigner, Wigner semicircle distribution of parameter t. So in other words, we have this, uh, this convergence, right? So it's just to keep it to you in mind. I mean, you have seen this twice. For sure, next time you will know all this, right? And uh, so the, the that's, that's for Brownian motion, yes, Pre indeed. Pre-Brownian motion, yes. Well, well, I, I haven't said anything about the process here, right? I just said the uh, for fixed t, so we have this convergence, right? But, but actually what uh, Victor Presabro said is true. I mean, this converts to a process in the free sense, and this uh, is the free, the so-called so free Brownian motion. So uh, the, the question of uh, Victor Perez Abreu was, uh, during that time, was uh, what happened if we replace Brownian motion by fractional Brownian motion, and then we started to collaborate on this. And, uh, and um, uh, so let me remind what the fraction of rounded motion is. So fraction of rounded motion is a center Gaussian process with Hurst, Hurst or a scaling index h between zero and one and covariance given by the following uh, covariance function, right? So this is well known. And uh, it turns out that this process is h self-similar, meaning that if we take the, Brownian mo the, the fraction of rounded motion uh, evaluated at a t for a uh, positive and fixed, it turns out that this process has the same law as h to the power as a dilation of the, uh, of, of the space of this process, but evaluated some t, right? So, 
Uh, this process has stationary increments, but not independent, so it's not a levy process. Its paths uh, are holder continuous with index H minus epsilon, for any epsilon bigger than zero. And uh, it possess finite one over H variations on any time interval of length T, right? So uh, this guy is not a semi-martingale, which means that we cannot use eco calculus, right? Except for the case H equals one over two, which is Brownian norms. Uh, so if you want to apply a stochastic calculus to fractional Brownian motion, there are two different approaches, right? One is coming, well, well what we call pathwise, which is uh, using Young integrals, and the other one is using Maliban calculus. So <clears throat> the pathwise approach, so you take a, a UT, a stochastic process with, uh, with gamma holder continuous trajectories, where gamma is bigger than than one minus h. So according to Jung's approach, so we can define uh, using Riemann Stilgis integral, and it turns out that this will exist uh, pathways, right? Uh, this method is particularly useful in the case when h is bigger than one half, and this because it includes processes from the form that f is a continuous differential function evaluated for the Brownian uh, motion, right? So, and, uh, and actually, I mean, uh, in the 90s, a uh, paper appeared about using Jung integral in order to define SDEs uh, with respect to the fractional Brownian motion, and then many people started to use uh, different techniques in order to get the, diff the, 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 the case when H is smaller than one half. Right. So uh, uh, I will introduce some uh, facts of uh, Maliban calculus. So for a fixed time interval uh, zero t, uh, let H be the Hilbert space defined as the closure uh, of the set of step functions with respect to the following scalar product. Right. And the mapping, this mapping, can be extended to a linear isometry with, between H and the Gaussian space generated by the fractional Brownian motion. So we denote this isometry by, by this application. And we, uh, we denote by S the space of a smooth and cylindrical, cylindrical random variables of this form, where F is a C infinity, uh, C infinity and bounded, and HI is, a is, a, is an element of the Hilbert space. Then the derivative operator is defined as follows. Right, so we sum over all the possible derivatives at uh, the, the well at the the oh I completely forgot so uh, at the variable x i and then you multiply by h i right so for any p bigger than one we can define the following uh, sublevel space as the closure of this uh, uh, s with respect with the, to the following norm. Okay, so this is just to, to know that we can actually uh, define a good space of this. And uh, what, I, what, what I want to, to explain next is that actually that we can define uh, uh, another operator which is, it can be like uh, in this sense like the antiderivative operator, right? So, uh, so the divergence operator delta is the adjoint of the derivative operator, and the domain of this operator is the set of random variables in L2, right? Such that the following inequality holds. So the divergence operator is defined by the duality relationship, which is here, where U is a random variable in L2, right? If the process U belongs to the domain of D, of the, of the divergence operator, we call du the score of the integral of u with respect to the fractional Brownian motion dh, and we will use the following notation. So this makes sense uh, uh, to uh, an integration with respect to uh, Brownian motion, uh, fractional Brownian motion, right? So we will apply to all these approaches in order to deduce a similar, a similar uh, result 
as uh, the one we see at the beginning of the talk, right? In order to do so, we consider a family of independent functional random motions with those Hartz parameters between one half and one, right? And uh, we symmetrize, uh, we consider the symmetric matrix of the fraction of Brownian motion. Uh, we define it in the similar way as in the Brownian case. So I, I just put here, if you don't remind it, right, remind it. And uh, uh, for any i, so we can, we can prove that there exists a function which is C infinity in an open subset, G, such that the Lebesgue measure of the complement is equal to zero, and the, <clears throat> the, um, the adjunct value is associated to the symmetric matrix of fractional Brownian motion uh, satisfies this uh, identity, right? So in this, in this case, it's not necessary, but for what, what I'm going to ex explain uh, later, it will be very useful, right? So, because in this case, I have to say that uh, uh, Victor Perez Abreu and David Molar, it was David Molar or Tudor? With David, with David Molar. Uh, so they show that uh, you can have like, you can have uh, some uh, stoch uh, stochastic representation of this lambda it, and actually that lambda it, they, they, they never collide, right? In this case. Okay, so oh, this is the results. So actually the dynamics of the eigenvalues of the fractional Brownian motion matrix is given by the follow following result. So as you can see, it's a very similar uh, 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 equation, integral equation, where you can see this is the repellent between, the, uh, the, between two, two uh, eigenvalues, but uh, despite of here having Ito integral, so now we have this integral, which is in terms of, uh, of the divergence operator, right? Okay. <clears throat> so uh, we, we follow the, the, same, the same approach, right, uh, as in the case for Brownian motion, uh, meaning, meaning the following. So we renormalize and we consider the uh, eigenvalues of the rescale fraction of Brownian motion matrix. So we define again the empirical measure of value process, and then uh, we play around with this, with this uh, quantity, right? So uh, we were very lucky because, uh, well, this, this, uh, this uh, identity follows from applying uh, Jung integral and, uh, and later replacing the Jung integral by, by the divergence operator. And then uh, if you want to see uh, when n goes to infinity that uh, these two quantities disappear, then you have to apply many inequalities that appears in, in, in malleable calculus. So like a major inequality. And, uh, and uh, in order to state the results, so I will define what the non-commutative fraction of Brownian motion is, right? So we consider a vector uh, this is a k-dimensional semicircle distribution. If for any linear combination of the latter vector, it has a semicircular distribution, right? So the, uh, if i be an arbitrary z, a is semicircular family indexed by i is a collection of random variables x, i in this uh, arbitrary z, uh, such that for every k and every e tuple or k tuple, in IK, so this vector has a k-dimensional uh, semicircular distribution. And uh, <clears throat> if you take H between zero and one, so a non-commutative fraction of Brownian motion with whose parameters H is just a center of semicircular process as H with this covariance function. So this is like a, in the uh, normal probability world, so you take a, a Gaussian process, right? And you define it as a Gaussian fractional Brownian motion as a Gaussian, uh, uh, as a Gaussian center process. And uh, this process was determined by the covariance function. So in this case, it's exactly the same. And this, was, this, this notion was introduced by Nurdan and Taku in 2014. So this process is similar 
meaning that this process is a non-commutative fractional grounded motion with the same parameter. And this process is a stationary, meaning that if you take the increments, so they will have the same distribution as a non-commutative fractional grounded motion of parameter h, right? So uh, the result is very similar to the result as uh, was presented uh, this morning by uh, Jacek. And uh, actually, with you take PR to be the space of probability measures on R, and though with the topology of weak convergence, and you take C uh, to be the space of continuous functions from R into this probability measure, and you endow with this, uh, with the topology of uniform conver convergence on compact intervals on R. And if you uh, uh, study the, how the empirical measures uh, behaves when ends go to infinity, then in 2015, I think the paper appears in 2016, so uh, it should be 16, so we prove that actually uh, this uh, empirical process converge to what is known as the non-commutative fractional Brownian motion of course parameter h between one half and one, right? And, and, and the covariance is given by the PVP. So uh, when we got this result, so I got uh, like a bit obsessed what happened when h is uh, smaller than one half. And I have to say that this was uh, not very easy, so I was uh, trying to First, I had to learn a growth path, and even with growth path, I didn't know how to use it, right? I mean, it was not very uh, clear, and uh, then Arturo Jaramillo came with a very nice uh, notion of extension of this divergence that actually worked very well in, in this setting. So, uh, uh, so this is what happened when you consider, instead of fractional Brownian motion, you consider Gaussian processes with covariance function R, in some sense, uh, more uh, very, uh, very general, uh, regarding some assumptions as usual, as usual. So we consider a family now uh, of independent center Gaussian process, defined on some probability space, and with uh, some common, uh, common covariance function that we denote by RST, right? And uh, in other words, so it means that uh, if you take the covariance between x i j and x uh, at time s and x j i j at time t, so this is equal just to r s t, right? Uh, so in order to to do Maliban <coughs> uh, calculus in this extended operator, so that what I will define later, uh, we need this, the following assumption. So that this mapping is continuous differentiable in zero and infinity, and is continuous at zero. And in addition, there exists alpha bigger than one, such that uh, uh, there's the supremum between zero and t of the derivative with respect to s to the power alpha ds is, is finite, right? So I will, I will show uh, later why this is needed. And, uh, so, uh, uh, and let me uh, just uh, rephrase the similar things that I already said for fra fractional Brownian motion, but now for any Gaussian processes. So we take uh, the Gaussian process with this covariance, and uh, then we introduce a Hilbert space. This has to be different, right? This is uh, just uh, copy-paste, right? But uh, this Hilbert space is defined as the closure of the set of stack functions with respect to this scalar product. So now uh, R is replaced by the, 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 the specific one that we have for, uh, for fractional Brownian motion. And uh, this, this mapping can be extended to a linear isometry, isometry between H and the Gaussian space generated by X, right? So again, in the similar way, we define the the Malevan derivative in a very, in the same way. And again, so we, it turns out that uh, we can define a solid space, which is the closure of this X with respect to this, the same norm, right? But now the Hilbert space is different. So uh, again, so we can define the uh, adjoint of the derivative operator, and uh, this, this is also called the divergence operator, right? And uh, 
it holds this, the same inequality, right? And it's defined by means of duality, the following duality relationship, right? So if in, in other words, if, if, if you take a process U, which is in the domain of, uh, of delta, we call D, DU just the square of its integral with respect to U for this Gaussian process, right? So if you try to mimic the same proof as uh, we did in the, in, the, in the case of fractional rounding motion for H between 1 half and 1, things do, do, don't, do not work, right? So there are, uh, there are some inequalities in order uh, that uh, break down, and then the, you cannot uh, proceed in a similar way. So <clears throat> it turns out that uh, Cheridito and Wallard show that in the case where fractional Brownian motion with first parameter between 0 and 1 four and 1 fourth, then the trajectories of dh do not belong to the Hilbert space h. So we can see that there are so many uh, things that uh, break down, right? But uh, uh, in order to overcome these this difficulties, so they extend the domain delta by uh, the following approach. So the main idea of extending the domain consists, consists in taking uh, phi, which is in L beta for some beta bigger than one, and, uh, and C belongs to the space of stacks functions between zero and T, right? So in other words, for any pair of function that uh, I said before, so we define the following uh, inner product, right? And uh, as, we, as we see, so this expression is well defined because we are assuming this uh, hypothesis, right? <clears throat> so moreover, it turns that it coincides with the inner product in H in the case when uh, C is a step function. And indeed, uh, we can see that uh, actually the approach uh, is uh, completely the same, right? And we said now that the stochastic process U in L1 belongs to the extended domain of the divergence if there exists P such that the following inequality holds, right? And for any smooth random variable F, where CU is some constant depending on U, in this case, so D, DU will be defined by the same duality relationship, but now with this uh, extended operator delta, right? that we, for simplicity, we are denoting the same, but actually uh, they are different, right? So then with this, uh, with this new uh, definition, so we consider a family of independent Gaussian process. So we assume that the covariance uh, satisfies the, the hypothesis previous mentioned. And similarly as the fractional Brownian uh, motion case, so we define uh, the symmetric matrix uh, Gaussian process. So, and here is, the, uh, we, this, this thing is, is needed, why? Because it turns out that, uh, and this, it was already proved by, the, by Arturo Caramillo and David Mollard, that uh, for fractional Brownian motion, smaller than one half, so uh, with posit positive probability, uh, the eigenvalues may collide, right? So uh, this uh, makes problems when you want to define the dynamics of the eigenvalues, right? Because at some point they have to break down if you plug in into the previous, one of the previous equations, because uh, as uh, you might remember, we have in the linear term, we have something that looks like one over lambda i minus lambda j, right? Something like this. <coughs> uh, so uh, uh, then for any i, so we can prove that there exists a function of c, uh, f, uh, c, phi i, which is c infinity in an open su subset of r n times n plus one over two, such that the Lebesgue measure of the complement is equal zero, and such that lambda i t is equal phi t x t. So for this actually, Thanks to this uh, result, so we were able to apply all these techniques and uh, overcome these di di difficulties. And it turns out that the dynamics of the eigenvalues 
of the matrix Gaussian process are given of this, in this form, right? Which is very similar. Right? Of course, this is the extended, uh, extended uh, divergence operator, which actually is, is, is needed whenever the, the self-similarity index is below one half, something like this, right? <clears throat> and uh, when the Gaussian process behaves more or less like fractional Brownian motion for h bigger than one half, then d theta is just the, this operator is just the usual operator in Malleable calculus, right? So then, then you, we proceed in a similar way, right? So we define the rescaled process. We define the empirical measure <coughs> in the similar in the similar way as before, and then uh, we we were able to have a description for the empirical measure applied to any function in C two V, right? So then uh, we tried to apply. Uh, similar techniques as before, and I said uh, Mayer's uh, inequality does not hold anymore. So we we, we really need to uh, uh, apply different techniques, and uh, this uh, then we know we observe that the following uh, uh, the following assumption was required for the for the convariance uh, function. Right, so this is giving some regularity on the function, and uh, and then we we have some, a very similar result, right? But instead of having, uh, well, here is uh, in terms of this uh, uh, function uh, r, right? Okay, so uh, if we want to characterize this uh, this density mu mu, I mean this process mu s, so we need to. Uh, introduce the cauchy stilges transform, which is defined as follows. And uh, it is well known that for the semicircle law, the Cauchy transform is given by this identity. And uh, applying the integral equation to, the, to this deterministic sequence of functions and using some continuity arguments, we get that the cauchy stilges transform of mu t satisfies this identity. And after some manipulation, we obtained that the uh, cauchy stilges transform of this guy, mu t, is just this uh, identity, right? Okay, which is just the Cauchy transform of a semicircle law with variance at time t given by rt t, and hence the law of a non-commutative semicircle process with variance rt t at time t is defined, right? So, uh, as you might see, so uh, this, uh, in this case, I mean, this, this result, in some sense, uh, improved the results the, uh, of, uh, uh, that I present for fractional Brownian motion between, H, between one half and one, because in this case, uh, RT, uh, well, the fractional Brownian motion between zero and one, for Hartz parameters, sorry, between zero and one, fulfills all the, the assumptions of this uh, uh, that we that we uh, uh, that we put to, to the function covariance function r, right? So and uh, this is everything that I have to say. So some uh, some bibliography that we that we use, right? I mean, it, it consigns when you take, I mean, so Malleban cal calculus ex is an extension of, uh, of uh, Ito calculus, right? So if you take that the process U, which respect you are integrating, is a locally integrated and adapted process and continuous, or you just progressive will, 
uh, uh, process, then they will coincide. But if, if this process is not uh, progressive, uh, then they're completely different objects, right? Uh, in the first one, uh, H must be between one half and, 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 and one, uh, one half and one, yes. And in this case, there is no restriction on, on the value of H. Maybe this could be understood as an universality, because at the end we got uh, something like this. Uh, like this two-dimensional shape with a kind of RTP, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a kind, but the, as, uh, as you can see, the, the, I mean, if you, uh, well, I remember the, the slide of, of Jacek, so they are completely different, right? So I mean, in some sense, they are universal because the semicircle law is involved, mm -hmm. but uh, but they are uh, independent, uh, very in the, uh, independent objects. So, for instance, uh, we don't we don't obtain the linear term, right? That uh, that Jasek Jash, Jash, and uh, Hosselis uh, obtain at the beginning. Exactly. But uh, in the case of uh, Jacek, so they obtain something more, more, more involved, right? Yeah, but, uh, yeah more, more, more some, something very similar to diffusion, yes. Well, in the in the in the free in the free uh, terminology. I don't know, because uh, in some sense the stationarity is quite important for uh, for for us, because uh, in some inequalities we use we use it. So if we lose this uh, this property, so I'm not so sure uh, which other technique uh, we may we may use, right? <coughs> But uh, I mean, the, 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 the main problem was the, how to overcome these uh, this, uh, col collisions between eigenvalues, right? Because normally what you, what you want to, to have is something, some, I mean, uh, you, you want to have like an integral equation for the empirical measure. But uh, you don't know if T, uh, I mean, for, if T can, I mean, if this is for L, uh, any T, right? And, uh, with all these uh, new, new, new uh, well, for me it was very new, right? But uh, for this extension of the operator, so it seems that uh, it, they, they don't care about the collisions, basically. I mean, for this uh, class of functions, right? Just, just to describe the dynamics. Then, I mean. Yeah. Uh, but in the case of. Uh, H bigger than one, yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, and Arturo is very keen with the differential geometry, so he was using some differential geometry objects in order to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, our guess is that uh, perhaps it will work uh, in a very uh, similar way, but uh, we haven't uh, we haven't uh, we haven't thought about this. So actually, uh, what we are trying to describe right now is fluctuations of this kind of uh, things, right? And maybe we go to the answer. This is this is this is what. Uh, 
but we are using your your suggestion. So be good, yeah. So we were more focused on this because uh, I mean we we think that it will be more or less the same, right? More or less the same, and it might work the same technique. Thank you. 